I am so excited to have my dear friend with me, Tony. Tony is a fellow PNES uh, sufferer, and she has a very unique qualification because she is a mental health counselor as well. So she does this for a living. She helps people to see where their thoughts are coming from, evaluate what's going on in their life. And yet here she is with PNES disrupting her journey. So thank you so much, Tony, for coming and joining me on this call. Oh, thank you for having me. You're awesome. So tell me a little bit about, um, if you don't mind, and I do appreciate your vulnerability and your willingness to share, but would you share with us a little bit about your journey? Um, okay, so I've been thinking about this, and I've been trying to delineate. I think there's a difference between cause and trigger. Um, and for me, um, the triggers came first. I'm still kind of figuring out the cause. Um, so in probably October 2018, I woke up one Monday, one Monday morning and um, was reaching in the fridge for something. I have no idea what, but my head started to do one of these mm. and I couldn't stop it. And it didn't last very long. So I just was like, oh, okay. And then maybe a few weeks later, I think it was my eyes or my hands, something else happened. And I still, I didn't think anything of it. Um, my husband started to get concerned because these were just happening. And I started to kind of figure out, well, what's happening, you know, days before. And I was on, well, I still am on medication for my anxiety. And I had noticed a pattern. I wasn't taking my med. And then the day after, I was guaranteed to have some sort of shaking. So I was on this path, like, it's got to be my meds. It's got to be my meds. And then in April of 2019, I woke up. I took the dogs out, um, made it right inside my front door before I lost vision. Um, I called for my husband. And by the time he got to me to get me to our couch, my whole body had started to shake. Mm. And... Uh, he got me to the couch and he called the ambulance and um, it lasted for about an hour. All of the shaking, by the time the EMTs got there, I had calmed down. Um, but I took my pill the day before. So I was then like, mm, I thought it was my pills not taking them. And that sort of began the journey of seeing neurologists and my pr primary care doctor trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. Um, so fast forward a few months, it was August of 2019, and I began to have three to four episodes a day um, for about two weeks straight. And I had already been um, like scheduled, pre-scheduled to go and have um, the epilepsy monitoring at a hospital near here. But I called and I said, you got to do something because now I can't even function. Um, I can't. I wake up, I'm having one. And then a couple of minutes later, I'll have another one. Mm -hmm. So I went there. And at that point, I was kind of leaning towards PNES um, after doing some research because the 24-hour and the sleep studies, nothing was showing epilepsy. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and had the monitoring done. And so September 3rd or 4th, I was told I had PNES, and uh, I broke a little bit. Um, it kind of messed with my identity, uh, mm -hmm. who I thought I was, um, stuff that I thought I had figured out, because I had a little bit of knowledge of what PNES was, because I had research it, been researching it. Um, I was like, no, I don't have any. I don't have any unresolved trauma. I, I don't have any unresolved trauma. I'm fine. Um, but I called my mom when they were discharging me and broke and said it's because I just held it all back. So um, since then, I have started to track everything um, on my cell phone. I have a little app where I track if I have one, track if I don't have one. Um, did I get enough sleep? Did I take my pills? Um, because I've learned my triggers really, really well on um, stress. Mm -hmm. I live at an elevated level of stress. I'm normally a stressful person. Um, I, 
I work well under stress, so I keep myself kind of at a stress level most of the time anyways. But when it becomes too much, my body decides it's done. Um, and in mental health, you know, with the trauma side of it, which is the cause, um, my brain has forgotten a lot from my childhood. It's blocked it for me, but my body, my body doesn't forget. And I think I've made it to the point in my life where I've been so strong for so long and ignored it for so long that my body's like, eh, you got to do something about it now. So um, it's kind of, it disrupted a lot for a while. Um, I'm still slowly, because that was only, what, six, four, five months ago since September that I actually got diagnosed. Mm. So I'm still learning. Um, I know my triggers really well. I am starting to figure out the causes, but I, so as, as a counselor, I know it's important to address the causes. Otherwise, I'm probably never going to be able to get rid of PNES seizures. However, I am not ready. I don't want to, um, because it's going to affect a lot of things. So... Yeah, I'm dealing with the triggers, and that's that. I like how you said that, that that's where you're at. Um, mm -hmm. You know the journey, but you're not ready to, to take that next step, and so you're dealing with what you can deal with. And, and you're not just dealing with the, the triggers itself, but you're being proactive. Uh, Tony and I are in a PNES HOPE group for recovery, those who want to recover. And so it's a lot of skills, teaching, and it's, it's a community building. And so it, you're not on this journey alone, which is I think is so important. Um, let me ask you a question. What app is it that you use? It's just a note taker. Oh, um, okay. okay. All right, good. What go in. information have you found, or what do you think that – would be helpful for other people to take note of. Uh, for me, I remember writing, like, if I skip meals, mm -hmm. uh, what I ate. I, I cut out caffeine completely for a few weeks, uh, probably two weeks. That was torturous. <laughs> now I don't have it at all, so it doesn't matter. But um, what are the things that you tracked? So for me, um, one of the big things is making sure I take my meds um, because it keeps – if they're not meds for seizures, they're mm -hmm. meds for anxiety. And because I am already an anxious person, keeping my anxiety at a manageable level is important. So I make sure not to miss my meds. I keep track of that if I took it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one that sometimes I'm like, I don't want to take it because it makes me tired. So I will keep track of that. Like, did I take it today? Did I not? Um, and this is another one might be a little too personal, but I'm a very kind of open book. I am tracking my uh, menstrual cycle as mm -hmm. well. Um, because it makes sense. It's chemical. I started to notice a pattern. Yes. So I keep track of that. Um, sleep, if I, you know, if something, if I didn't get enough sleep, which doesn't happen a lot anyways, but I keep track of that. If mm -hmm. I'm sick, I keep track of that, like what happened when it started. Um, other than that, I'm not keeping track of a whole lot. There's more oh. I could probably yes. um, diet-wise and everything, but I drink coffee all day, so I know that that's an issue. <laughs> um, but, yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that because I think that's really helpful to people. So many people ask, well, what can I do? You know, because they're not – not everyone's at the same place at the same time. So it's very helpful that they can be proactive. Now, you were diagnosed a few months ago, back in September, you said. How have your seizures changed from the first ones that you had where the, the EMT came to where you're at now? So the first ones were those small things I told you about, like just mm -hmm. a little head jerk or my hands. Um, they escalated. We got real bad. Um, in August and September before I got diagnosed, it, they looked like grand malls. Um, I could lose sight. I could lose speech. My whole body went, um, and I was having, like I said, three to four a day for about two weeks straight. 
Um, I've gradually kind of come back down now. I'm not having any near as frequently. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of about once a month. I do shake every night before I go to sleep. I think it's just my body kind of releasing tension. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that, it's nothing notable for me. Um, it might be for other people. It might be for, you know, um, I co-sleep. So if my daughter's sleeping with me. She mm -hmm. needs to know, like, hey, your my mommy's legs are shaking, um, but it's okay. You don't need to worry. So I have that every night. Um, sometimes I can I notice if I'm about to start, and I can head it off if I catch it in time. Okay, how do you do that? Real quick. Grounding, a grounding technique. Um, so if I can't um, talk to myself out loud, because I've had, I've had myself start to have, um, a, well, it felt like I was going to start to have a seizure in session with a client. And that's the last thing that I want. Um, so I dig my, I dig my nails into my hand to kind of bring me back to the moment. Um, and then I will sit and do that for the whole session so I can stay focused because in that moment, my client is more important to me so that I normally will inflict some sort of, it's not super painful, but enough to like, okay, wait, you can't, you can't yeah. go in your head. So yeah. Okay. I'm glad you clarified that. Cause when I was thinking, I was like, you're doing, you're not, how hard are you doing this? <laughs> no, it's not painful. I don't leave, you know. There might be a mark from where my nails are. Well, I don't inflict a lot of pain. Good, good. So, uh, well, thank you so much. I'm so glad. We're going to have another video uh, shortly. And um, I just want to thank you, Tony, for coming on. You've really made an impact in my life personally. And uh, it's just such a great honor to know you. Thank you. I feel the same way. Thank you. All right. We'll see you soon. Okay.